let me show you how we can build pretty, pretty exciting and broad range of financial services on very basic mobile payment platforms. To do that, let's understand the household's problem. So let's arrange the payments they need to make across the arrow of time. So at this time here, now, let's say, I get a wage. With this, I need to pay for school fees uh, for my children. I also need to send some money home uh, because my, I need to help my parents with, their rent, with some rent. These are the bigger payments I'm facing. Of course, all along, I'll have the smaller payments for food and so on. So how do I typically do that? Typically, I do that in the cash economy. And what I do is uh, money is coming in. And what I do is I put some money in jars that are allocated for each of these purposes. So I'll take some of this money that just came in. I'll stick some of it in this jar here. These are the coins. And I'll stick some of it in this jar here. This, kind of, th this way I can make sure that on the school fees day I have enough money to pay uh, and on, on this day, I'll send some money to my parents. That's how it happens in the cash world. How can we replicate this sort of behavior simply in the electronic world without people having to manage multiple accounts and open multiple accounts? We can have the same notion of virtual jars. The way this could work is on this day, I got some money. My wage came in electronically. Uh, and what I do is I push some money, I send some money to myself to the school fees day. I reserve that money for school fees simply by sending it forward in time to that day. And I can send some money to this date here, which is when I need to send money to my parents. Uh, and that money then becomes allocated to that purpose for that day. On this day, then I can send the money electronically to pay for the school fees and to send money home. This I can do through mobile money. Mobile money essentially uh, works on the basis of two main screens. The user interface is centered on two basic capabilities. One is send money and the other one is check balance. Uh, for send money, I, uh, to make this payment here, for example, uh, to pay the school, I really need to, to supply three bits of information. Who, who is, this money, is this money for? I'll enter a phone number or a builder code. What is the amount that I want to send? And then it's a, a, I'm asked to enter the PIN, which is my identifier to, to really prove that I'm the legal owner of those funds. With this three bits of information, I can send money to the school. But what about this transaction here? How can I park this money uh, to, uh, for, for the school? Well, here I would enter my own phone number and then there's an optional question that will be added to the basic mobile money, uh, send money um, menu, which is when do you want to do this transaction? I would enter that date. If you leave it blank, the default is real time and the money just goes immediately. The check balance menu today presents a single number. This is your total balance. Under the system here of deferred payments, it would be a little bit more of a nuanced story. It will say, the available balance is this. This is the money that is not earmarked for school or home. It's to make all these little payments down here for daily living. But then on these dates, you have these amounts coming in, which represents now my statement of financial objectives, because I can see that this date is for school fees and this date is for home. So we can see how we can build a, 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 a broader range of services on top of a single mobile, uh, mobile money experience simply by adding one extra line on the user interface. What's, what's going on here? What, what, what are the deeper insights that we can get from here? First, that we've evolved the mobile money proposition from essentially pay now, you got the money, I'll help you move it, to pay plan, which is I'm going to help you uh, build up the balance that you need for school fees. And of course, once you have it all together, of course I'm going to send, uh, help you pay uh, move that money across to the school as well. It's a richer customer experience. Second insight that we get here is that we are helping people save for particular purposes, but we're not really using the word savings. We're presenting everything as payments. And that's very important because savings is not a very intuitive word for most poor people. 
Saving is what I do when I have money left over, except that I never do, so why are you even mentioning the word savings? Their problem is not that they have excess money, their problem is the opposite. They have excess payments, excess things they want to buy, and they never seem to get there simply because the money goes into today's payments and obliterating tomorrow's payments. So we talk about helping people achieve their future payments, achieve the, 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 the goals uh, the things they want to buy in the future, I think it's going to be much more resonant with them. It's all about payments. And in fact, the reason why it's all about payments is because that's the essence of the money management problem. And that's really the one that we need to be helping with. We shouldn't be helping people save or pay. What we really, we sh really should be helping them is manage their money across space and across time because that is the essence of money management. I want to buy this thing at this point in time, this thing in, at, at this location from this store at this point in time. So the payments logic fits in, but it really is not about payments, it's about money management. The third element that I would like to point out is that money has two functions. One is as a store of value, and another one as, as means of payment. And the two really are inseparable. The only reason why in this wor world here we're paying, uh, we're, uh, we're paying uh, in cash is because we stored it in cash. That's very different to what we're trying to do in the electronic world where we want people to pay electronically but we're not expecting them to hold electronic value. That's never going to work. People are, always have a preference for paying in whatever form they hold their currency, which is why if we really want people to pay for the school fee electronically, we need to make sure that they build up that balance electronically and not in cash. This is the basic uh, uh, proposition uh, that, uh, that, that really transforms savings as a, as a question of deferred payments in a broader money management context. But let me talk about three extensions to this system here to make it a little bit richer, more realistic. The first one is that we really need to introduce a third concept around, uh, around these payments, uh, th these deferred payments here, and that's about early liquidity. The first question everybody will have uh, in terms of this electronic jarring is, well, what if I need to get my money early? That doesn't arise in these jars down here because these are banknotes. I can tap into the, these funds if I really need to, uh, uh, but what about electronically? And here we need to consider a, an, a, an array of, of options from the extreme position of this money is locked up, meaning not available down here, this money is here, not here, to, well, why, why not make it fully available all, all the, any time that you want, just like these banknotes and these coins in here are available. In this case, you might still have this payment, but it would be showing as available balance. It still serves a discipline function. But perhaps that wouldn't be, perhaps some people want a little bit more discipline. Don't make it so easy for me to tap into those funds. We can think of inter, in, intermediate conditions for early liquidity. One, for example, might be institute a kind of waiting period where you can access your money if you want, but not immediately. Let's not make it easy to fall for, uh, for immediate temptations impulse uh, buying. Another way to do that might be to introduce a notion of indivisibility, which is, sure, I'm going to give you access to your money, to this money here, if you really need to, but I'm going to assume that's for an emergency, and so you need to take all of it, or substantially, uh, 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 a substantial amount of money. I'm not going to let you uh, uh, fall for small temptations uh, uh, out of this balance. A third possibility is to introduce the notion of peer pressure, for example, by having everyone uh, nominate a savings buddy, someone that they trust who would be informed or might even need to approve uh, if you want to take money early, just to help you uh, uh, control yourself. So that's an, uh, well, that, I think, would be an essential feature of a deferred payment scheme to make this viable for people, to make it so that they have both discipline by parking money into these virtual jars, but also uh, liquidity in case of an emergency. The second extension is that I've talked about um, transfers in time as if time really was one date after, the another, uh, uh, after another, but that's not really how people look at it. Dates are fairly concrete in the next payment cycle, which are represented by these payments here, but further out, time gets fuzzy. 
if I want to say send money uh, to uh, to for example for buying a, a, a motorcycle or to fix the roof of my house don't really ask me what date I'm associating with that because I don't really know so we could go get around this by creating further out fuzzier categories of time for example this part here we might call later this this one we might we might call much later and this would be shown here as later and much later so actual as elements of time except they're fuzzier time as it goes out and I might choose to associate later is for bicycle money much later is for roof fixing money so we can treat money a little bit more flexibly and what differentiates later from much later might be precisely the kind of liquidity uh, conditions that I'm attaching to it because the further out it is probably the more discipline I need to uh, to, 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 to have on it the final extension I want to talk about is the role of credit. I haven't talked about credit yet, but if the provider gets to see how many goals you set for yourself, how regularly you're contributing to, to these goals, how far out in time uh, you, you're, uh, you're managing your money, of course, I'm going to then have a lot of information about how you manage your money, which makes me want to uh, uh, advance your money. So as a provider, I might say, well, remember this uh, bicycle money here in the later part? Well, based on the behavior that I've observed and the fact that you're all, you are regularly setting money for, uh, aside for, for, for that bicycle, let me advance you the rest of the money you need for the bicycle. Buy it now. You don't need to wait until later. In that case, the later pot might go negative, because, representing the amount of money that I've given you. You still need to contribute to later, but at that point, it's not to uh, get the bicycle. You already have it. It's to repay the loan. So again, what you see here, to summarize, is an integrated customer proposition that does savings and payments and credit all together, integrated with a very simple extension to the mobile money, uh, mobile money user interface, all designed to help you manage your money.